Hello and welcome back to Compiler Programming. Today I want to do some improvements to the statement handling in the language. And in particular, I want to separate statement handling from the expression handling code. So right now all of this is basically um, handled in one function. So we have this token match expression. And as you can see, it handles uh, both like uh, if statements, uh, I don't know, definitions. They are somewhere, uh, yeah, definition and assignment statement, right? So all, all of this stuff. And I want to sort of turn it around and make it more like a standard parser where you have a way to, like first you match on a type of the statement that you have and only then you uh, figure out like what is the expression. Um, of course, there are like in traditional parsing that would be a bit more efficient than what I will have here. But on the other hand, I will keep the ability to very easily expand this. And in particular, I will also either in this episode or some other time, I will change how the while thing is set up. So right now we have only have this generic macro keyword that allows us to uh, describe this sequence, but I think I want a more specific set so that says statement macro and that it would be something that would just allow uh, to participate in that separate loop that tries to match statements versus a separate loop that will try to match expressions. And uh, there will be another thing for expressions where I will need to do the uh, precedence somehow so that the matching is a bit more uh, strict with how it handles it. So it will be a more traditional thing again with something like operator overloading or um, even more generic form like what Haskell has. Anyhow, so the first thing that I will do is start from the very top. So we have a uh, match uh, module, I think, and this is where we will uh, start with. So here we are clearing uh, new lines and then we are doing the struct definitions. Actually, the, do we need to uh, clear the new lines in the module, I wonder? Uh, let's uh, try that. Okay, we do, so that's fine. Uh, but uh, here we have struct definition, macro definition, external import function or uh, constant definitions and I think we can uh, change this loop to not include functions, but make functions inside expressions. But for now, that's fine. So I guess the next one will be with uh, our block. And this is the one that needs to change somewhat. So right now we have um, <coughs> Yeah, rewrite new lines and it is semicolons, so that's good. And then uh, we we doing token match expression, and this is where I want to change this to be a token uh, match uh, statement. Okay. And with statements, it does not really have, I guess. Uh, so for now, it will not have a target, maybe? I don't know. Uh, basically, uh, the whether or not it will need to have uh, an out value, kind of, like we implemented in, I started implementing in copy elision episode. Uh, so I guess I will say this. Uh, value star uh, results value is i uh, is so basically for the last statement you can do it like this bool is last statement then we check if i plus one is this so it's the last statement 
So if it is the last statement, then we sort of uh, lock result value. Otherwise, we allow it to be basically anything. We we don't care. We will discard the actual value anyway. Maybe there would be even a nicer way to say I want to discard this, but for now this should do the trick. Okay, so this goes into here and obviously token match statement doesn't exist but we can add it so let's say that this is now going to be actually probably it's going to be a void uh, and uh, so this is return this is also then going to be a void i would assume actually no yeah uh, it's a bit tricky because i'm at the same time in the middle of this refactoring with the new way to get the values out so i'm not sure what would be the good good point here but i guess uh, i guess let's just go straight in and see how it is so okay void token match statement and uh, it will accept all the same things statement result value and then we should just move some stuff from the token match expression and this will help us uh, make things more more strict is how they work okay so we have assignment right we have uh, if statement and so new lines that's fine in macro since right now macro is just a while then we also that should also go into statement handling uh, casts are not part of the statement they are part of expression struct field function negative function call pointer all of these are expression this is expression and here are non-expression stuff okay so let's do that i think it will be something like these things are statements and assignments and macros so this looks good to me okay uh, let's go back here this is what we will do and we will probably change these things a bit so that they are uh, not some of them don't require this extra right expression wrapper because they all uh, need to match at the very beginning of the statement like right either full statement matches or none of it matches and that's the whole point of the whole difference between uh, statements and expressions so yeah they you need to have a state and that's just the difference between children and state here so uh, it's easy token um, mature state state okay and you have no idea what those things are that's fine we will just move you down a bit uh, where is the so we'll put you here let's go back and do a forward declaration 
Okay. Uh, this thing, I guess, also changed the forward declaration. Uh, result value. Okay, that's fine. Differs in level and direction. Uh, is it defined in here? Yeah. So void here and let me rename this parameter to be consistent as well. Okay. What else do we have? Void star body result. So this should not be necessary, I think. Like I should be able to just get rid of this stuff, but I don't know. We'll probably have a bunch of tests failing. Let's see. And here is another token force value. I'm not sure we actually end up here at any point in time. Let's let's just see what happens if I do this. Token parse block void function returning the value. That's fine. Unblock result. Uh, okay. Oh, I guess we don't need this. We don't need to pass the program, maybe. Okay. So that builds, but I'm very certain we'll have a bunch of test failures. So we'll need to start going with them one by one. Yeah, there is definitely a lot of stuff that is not working and We'll just need to figure out what is uh, happening. I will skip the exception one because it probably is just a side effect of all the other stuff that is not going how it's supposed to go. So let's see. Okay. We have uh, void to S64 function. Where are you, void to S64 function? Okay, so this is probably um, this is a probably actually a side effect of my change to block to not um, to not return the value. Let's uh, see. Okay, uh, we will open up the debugger and start looking at that. Source spec is this function, and let's just dive uh, right in. As we go inside, and I also need to make test here. So uh, it goes into here. So first, let's check. Okay, we have return result value. The return result value should be, yeah, it's a, re a register, it is uh, 8 bytes, so this is uh, correct. We got it from the function definition. Let's see what happens when we try to parse the block. So we have the children, we will have children, we get a new scope, we rewrite lines, we do statements, we should have one block statement. Yeah, we do have one block statement, so we uh, go into here. So state, is it the last statement? That should be true, yeah. So our block result value should still be that uh, a register, yeah. 
that's fine go inside we're going to talk in match statement uh, macro won't match ah okay yeah makes sense so what is happening is like none of these actually match and we also don't early error don't early out so that's a big problem let's see um, how do I do this well there's a couple of things that needs to be done first of all we need to reset the state on every um, on every call because otherwise they might mutate it and it's not good and I said I, I also want to r remove this rewrite expression so this is gonna be now like this so state scope builder Okay, and yeah, so this goes into here, this goes into here, okay, let's see if that compiles, it's not actually how it's supposed to be uh, long term, but too few arguments uh, for a call. An explicit return to few arguments for a call. So let's start with explicit return. You should not get the target. And here is. Uh, well, for now, I will do this. I will add the to do saying to do should I uh, use the return value of the function descriptor actually we can do that sort of um, this is would be like value star so let's read the hmm first value I think I have or result yeah okay value star result value is gonna be builder descriptor I already forgot what it is so let's go check so we have function builder it's gonna be builder descriptor function return type or something and uh, descriptor function return um, descriptor function returns okay this is what you will do and oh this is this is tricky I guess for now I will yeah I will actually leave it as it is because uh, the issue here is that with explicit, explicit return we need to uh, also like set up a jump to the uh, to the epilogue and right now that's not what we can easily do so let's leave it like this and hope that that works okay definition and assignment statement why do you need the target value so we create an on the stack value then we move this 
yeah so this needs to change obviously um so this is now like this and yeah there is gonna be lots of big changes i think but as you can see also the move uh, values are disappearing um oh this is this is tricky actually this one because of the because we are essentially doing the inference on the type right we don't know what the type of it is unless we get the type from here so i think something like this should work but uh, i'm not entirely certain okay that builds but it won't work anyway so token match statement okay let's continue so that for each one of those uh, we want to reset state so let's actually add the function that uh, does that so it is more convenient to write this um, token reset state gets a state it says that the state uh, as its third index is zero and it just returns state so token reset state start index and the reason i want that is because i want to wrap it like this here right so that's uh, just would be a bit easier than making it into a separate statement i could probably shove it all into a loop but that will come as the as the next thing for now i will just do it manually okay 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 and okay so now we need to close the braces do we build no you do not uh, in line uh, token major state star okay now you're happy and now we need to uh, sort of make sure that they do not like if one of them matches we don't uh, trigger the other one i could either do uh, if stuff or i can do a trick because ors are uh, short circuiting as we saw and implemented ourselves in one of the previous videos i can just do this and what that will do basically is as soon as one of them returns true this whole uh, sequence will actually uh, stop i hope is illegal because has type white okay uh, who has type white uh, rewrite thing well actually that's good so macros i guess happen regardless um, let's say to do consider how this should work again what is this expanding to uh, condition body so it will expand to uh, to this stuff okay that should be okay let's see and one final thing is uh, we do want to say token uh, right or token match expression so state scope builder result okay. so if all of these fails then we have one of the statements like this one right not a special one where you just uh, end up 
calling a uh, function and even if a function returns something you don't care about what it returns so this is like the last possible match that we will uh, do and match expression um, it needs a program so i guess builder program okay good I have no idea if that's actually better than what we had before, but let's try to step through the program and see what's going on. Okay. Uh, this is not the test that I'm interested in. Okay. Well, it looks actually already better because I think that exceptions were failing. Go inside here, we go inside here, go inside here, we go inside match statement, we are rewriting the macro. All of these uh, fails, I assume, and we will step into. So this reset, assignment. Yeah. My expectation is that all of that fails and we should have ended up in match expression. Well, let's see. Okay, we still have failed, so let's restart it again. So this is this function, this is this, and now I want to have a breakpoint in token match expression. Um, so let's see what's going on. Okay, we got to here. That's what I would expect. Let's look at the state. Start index is zero. Tokens is, we have one token. And if we look at that one token, and watch. So I finally figured out how to do this correctly in Visual Studio. I need to put it in square braces and say state tokens uh, data length and now we will actually have it knows how many there are okay we have an integer token that makes sense so let's see what's going on we get into force value bounce check that's fine force value we get into integer it works uh, okay yeah so we have this issue that um, this is not using the out stuff um, I guess uh, so I have two options. I can dive very deep inside or I can try to hack this in a bit. And I think for now I'll choose uh, the hack and hope that it works. So we'll do the following if it can be a very large if statement. Return. So if either of those succeeded, then it's fine. Now we have say value star uh, expression result is uh, this. And then if expression results and expression result type is not void
So basically we are saying that if this actually returns something, then we will put it inside the result. This is uh, definitely a hack and something that needs to go away. I have, I think, a couple of those in other places as well. So fix me hack um, target value, yeah. Result value and expression result. Uh, descriptor, descriptor, and instructions. And you want a location. Yikes. Um, that's awkward. Well, I guess this thing can also accept the location. So, uh, const uh, source location star location. Okay, that's fine. Uh, token match match statement and you need now a source location but here we actually sort of do have it kinda um, this obviously needs to have more work on it Oh, this already accepts children. Whatever. Um, let's just first make it work. Get the real location. So okay, that works. Now I want match um, statement and I want to know if we end up in when we get to here okay so this is our test we get here and we get to here uh, do we have anything inside expression result Well, we have an immediate, that's good. And we should get into this, uh, yeah, we should get in this branch and we should move immediate into the right value. Okay, so that should make this test pass. And I guess we now see what else fails. And now we have no matching overload found. And that is unfortunate. And which one is it? Is it so let me go back in a stack and see. Should be able to define a local function. That is interesting. So it looks like something happened to this stuff okay i will uh, for now disable this stuff local function so let's disable this and x me target value. And let's just see what other tests are failing So it looks like the next one is also failing. So something is up with overloads. That's okay. Why are you failing? I 
that I finish this? So somebody is holding on to the interesting. Okay, looks like now I can build. So it was Visual Studio that was holding on to these things. No matching overload again. Okay, let's see which test is it. So is it like all functions now get this? Or I have more overload tests. Okay, so this is uh, this is these bars and call function value or array and here we have arguments wait what we write function calls who are we trying to call here I guess we have target token location, so we should be able to figure out exactly. So it cannot find um, a right file. And why can't it find it? So the actual target is there. It is uh, just that it wasn't able to match it. Huh. That's very interesting. Somehow this array is empty, but I'm not sure that's actually true. Okay, let's try to pause here and see what's going on. So who are we calling? To call operand function, 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 function. Arguments, data. Hmm. I need a better way to figure out who are we calling. I guess here I can see that. Target token location. So here we are calling something from the tests. We are calling the inner. I think all of it is uh, going to be actually passing. So I will stop at this bus and now we can actually get the right thing so let's verify that this is right file yep it is so let's see what's going on Descriptor is to call function descriptor. That is the descriptor indeed. And if we go to function, we go to arguments, data. So yeah, it has five arguments here. Do we have five arguments? We do have five arguments. So that seems fine. What's our score? It did not match. That's very unfortunate. Um, OK. 
Okay, let's do that again because I need to know what's going on with the score. Five, 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 five. Going here, going here, go inside. So what is our source and target argument? Let's make it slightly bigger. So we have descriptor. What? Somehow we managed to get a function descriptor as the first argument. What? That is very, very strange. Uh, I guess I know what is going on. So maybe So if we look at this thing, then this is should be get std handle or something, maybe. I don't, the problem is I don't have a good way to figure out where this is coming from. No, actually, Oh, okay. okay. I, I, I got what's happening. So it is uh, this statement that is causing the problem. We have a td out handle assigned to this stuff and it just ignored the rest of these things instead of applying uh, expression stuff to it. Uh, it just, uh, yeah, I think. Let's verify that. So we have uh, this stuff, we look at it here, yeah, 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 so this is not how it's supposed to work. Instead, uh, we need to look for the assignment. And for now, I will do the copy pasting. Well, technically it will not have this uh, left-hand side state, so that's something to something nicer, I guess, uh, but this stuff will definitely need to happen. So let's just take the whole thing and put it over here and then see what is what's what. So we have equals well, on the left hand side state, no. So we want to verify that if LHS and is more than one, um, is it going to be one? I, I, I. Yeah, and return false. Then we do the original thing where we matching this operator now okay let me add a comment so it explains why this test here um, for now we support only single ID on the left and we say if LHS 
So this doesn't need to happen. Instead, uh, we would say if so name uh, token star name is dynamic array gets of state tokens zero if name id uh, type is not token type id then so return false okay now we have this name so we don't need this stuff and this is better we match the range and here we also need to do scope define target this is move yeah Mm. Hold stick. You need a star here. Okay. That is should really be much better. I hope. We don't even need this here, I think. Let's see. So, uh, let's, okay, did I rebuild? Yeah. Let's see what's going on. Ding, ding. Where is our fizz bus? Here we go. We got to here, and now the arguments should be much better. I hope. Arguments, data. Actually, we can get to here. Source argument and target argument. Well, that's much better. Source argument is immediate. Is it though? Mm, no, it isn't. Okay, so something did not work exactly as I hoped it would. Hmm. Well, at least it's not a function anymore. Immediate f5. Ah, okay, no, that that's fine. So we are calling different function from what I thought because now we are actually uh, calling this thing. So all good, all good. We should have a target, yeah. So it should match, yeah. And cast, it's fine, it's good. F5. Now we will be calling the write file, I guess, and this is where it previously did not match. So we go inside here, go here, and our source argument should be something much better. It is, it's a 64 bit integer, so I assume it will, yeah, it match exactly. And I will just let the program run because I think. Uh, things would be better. Well, not fully though. So we are panicking here. And why are we panicking here? What is happening? 
So this is token force value. Ah, but it is just uh, a stupid problem with switch statement. Um, so go nine to six. Uh, it's because I forgot to do this. I guess. Or I can. I don't know. Let's see if somebody actually uses this value, then it will crash again. If not, then it's good. Uh, okay, we made it past Fizzbuzz. We do have more stuff failing. What is the next thing that is failing? I'm slowly running out of time, so I might wrap up soon, but let's take a quick look at what's going on here. Fizzbuzz, and this is struct definition. Okay, let's see why do you explode. Again, no matching overload found. Uh, da -da -da. Function call, who are we calling? Target token, size of. Ooh. Size of was a special thing. So yeah, there is definitely something wrong with overloads, but I think I will leave this investigation for later and see how the rest of this stuff actually fares. Um, let's see. Okay, we made it a couple more. And we still ended up in here. So what are we trying to force now? Um, token, token is operator. Minus 11. So it's also something that I guess it's one of the hello world. Um, yeah, it's a hello world example and it doesn't like one of the definitions. Bleep, 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 bleep. Okay, um, fixtures. Hello world. Yeah, so that basically is the same issue as we had previously. For now, I will just verify it. So if I do this, it should work just fine. Okay, good. So there is definitely a problem with overloads, but I will look at it offline. And there is another problem with this, uh, this stuff, but this is exactly copy of what just happened with uh, colon equals where we just not correctly interpreting the right side hand side of the expression but as far as these declarations go it's a bit more tricky because we also want to introduce the concept of uh, constant expressions versus non-constant expression or like what well, can be evaluated at compile time where it cannot so this is a bit more complicated topic uh, that is definitely going to require its own thing. So for now, I, it's actually pretty good. Uh, it wasn't a very smooth ride, but we made it this far. So he's bad working and this is my go-to example for complicated program because this is the most complicated program we have right now and the rest can be fixed up pretty easily. So thank you very much for watching and hopefully see you next time when we tackle one of the next issues. Goodbye.